Hello and welcome to my channel. Hope you're all feeling strong and well. Today we're looking at a nice little spot hidden away and it's between Westvale and Hollywell Green. And it's actually somebody's garden. So yeah, I'm just walking around the outskirts of the garden. You can see it's all fenced off. And the fencing is quite high. And the reason for that is you can't see them, but down there there's deer. It's a bit of a deer farm in this area of the garden. So I can't actually get into this part, but later on there is a part that I can get into. We'll sneak into the garden a little bit later on. Just spotted a couple of deer. I don't know if you can see them on this little lens. They're quite tame. They're just lying there. Pretty big. So the story begins in the 18th century when the Shaw family established themselves as pivotal figures in the textile industry right here in Hollywell Green. By the mid 19th century, Samuel Shaw had transformed his family's fortunes into a global powerhouse. Now, not only did he revolutionize the textile industry, he also had a profound effect on the local community. He provided good wages, solid homes, and even a church and a mechanics institute right here in Hollywell Green. <laughs> So I've just entered the garden. <laughs> Looks like a castle, doesn't it? But it's not, it's all fake. <laughs> this is what happens when wealthy mill owner meets Victorian extravagance. With the wealth flowing in, Samuel Shaw embarked on creating Shaw Park, a place that would reflect his status and aspirations. Overseeing a vast estate that would boast ornate gardens an impressive aviary and even his own private sanctuary for birds. Samuel spared no expense. Imported trees lined the footpaths and exotic birds filled the large aviary. He built ornamental structures like a smoking house, a conservatory and a decorative grotto. Features that made Shaw Park a marvel of its time. However, like all great tales, this one too has its fall. By the early 20th century, the once bustling estate began to fade. The mansion was demolished, the mills closed down, and the park was eventually donated to the local council. Today, Shaw Park is a shadow of its former self, yet when you walk amongst the ruins, you can't help but feel the echoes of its grand past. The towers, the turrets, and even the misplaced staircase tell a story of a time when this place was a testament to one man's dreams and ambitions. As night falls, the rooks and crows take to the skies. Samuel Shaw's legacy continues to linger, though much has changed. The spirit of Shaw Park endures a reminder of the enduring impact of our past on our present. I don't know whether you can see, but up there behind me, I'd have to climb right up to show you. I'll try and give you some better pictures as I'm telling you. That's uh, part of the aviary, it's still there. And there's rooks and crows, you can certainly hear them. There's another one up here and there's a bit of a walkway. Maybe it'll go up to it. Let's have a look. Let's try and have a look at this aviary. It's all fenced off, you see. You can see the little perches. Let's see if I can get closer. It's a bit dodgy underfoot. The things I do for you guys. Yes. You can see the little perches and the 
they're just roosting in there, specifically made for birds. You can see the, the rest of the park down there. And this area behind me, the walled part behind that, that's where the Italian mansion was. And you can really imagine it behind that uh, red Italian looking architecture. There is a part of it behind that tree at the end of the wall. There's a part of the mansion left. Now there's a couple of lakes, ponds. <laughs> now there's a couple of ponds in the park and uh, they're all fed from the nearby brook. And that was purposely brought into the park. You just see that archway just there. I'll show you a closer look at that. The water was uh, redirected from the brook down into the park. And uh, the whole area of uh, Samuel Shaw's land, his garden, was actually 150 acres going right through to the deer park, which we saw earlier. And there's a massive lake in there, but you can't get into that bit. It's private land. Quiz question. Put your answers in the comments section below. Do comment on these videos. I don't get enough comments. I like a little bit of banter in the comments. Now the quiz question, when does a pond become a lake? When is it big enough to be classed as a lake? I was going to say this was a lake, but it's not, is it? It's a pond. And I am reliably informed that uh, this particular pond <laughs> was a Lido. It was an outside swimming pool, complete with diving boards. And uh, yeah, you can kind of imagine it when you really look around the outside of it. It would be a little bit bigger and it must have been quite deep. Now it's just a pond. Well, that's it for this one. I hope you've enjoyed it. Little walk through Shaw Park. And it's, uh, it's places like these that remind us that uh, history is often hidden in plain sight. We're back into the present now. That's what uh, remains of the uh, Italian mansion behind me. I upload vlogs regular. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, I don't know where I'll be next time, but I do know I want you with me. So until the next one, bye.